what is the best way to make a long distance relationship work? Or at least in the beginning? Well, the obvious answer is just <laughs> to get in the same city. Um, but I know that that's not always possible. And so what's really important is communication. What's really important is including each other in your life. Um, sometimes that's in the form of text. Sometimes that's in the form of actually picking up the phone and calling each other. I think the more you can share and the more transparent you can be, the better. I know that sometimes what happens with long distance relationships, and I'm not saying this is for you necessarily, but certainly in the collective, a lot of times what happens is people build a fantasy about themselves <laughs> and about who they are and what they do. And it's easy when there's a long distance relationship to talk about all the good things that are happening and not necessarily talk about the things that you're struggling with. And so I would just suggest that the truth is, is really important and transparency to talk about everything that's happening. And if that feels right for you, or if it feels like, oh, I'm micromanaging the relationship, then it's either not the right relationship, or maybe you're not, maybe you're not ready to be in a long distance relationship because it takes a little bit more commitment in some ways, because you have to, yeah, you have to make time to, to connect. Um, whereas if you're living in the same town or the same household, sometimes it's easier to just, you know, show up and yeah, know what's going on. So I think that communication part's really important. Now, with that said, I will also say that um, not only are you making up fantasies, not you, but generally uh, fantasies about yourself and like how you want to be perceived and I'm just going to show my best side. Um, you're also making up fantasies about the other person. And you're seeing them as a as what you want to see. And that's not necessarily bad. I'm just saying that you want to continually validate, like, is this person actually the person, the, the real person, or is it the person that I'm fantasizing that I want them to be? And so that's kind of the glitch sometimes with long distance relationships is that the reality of the day to day doesn't always come through until you get to a place where you can actually be in the same location. And so I think that it's totally possible. And the best part about long distance relationships potentially is that the chemistry, the sexual chemistry doesn't have to be the one thing that you're acting on. A lot of times in new relationships, you're just really locked into like having the physical experience, which is wonderful and you should do, but sometimes that makes people not talk as much and not get into some of the deeper things that are going on in their life. And so having a long distance relationship in the beginning, at least, is nice because then you can practice your communication skills. You can practice articulating how you feel because you have to actually speak it. You can't just show it. And so there's a lot of benefits there um, in long distance relationships because you can you can learn a lot about each other um, without just the bedroom and all the fun, sexy stuff that happens um, with, especially with new love. So um, I think that you'll find if you are, again, just very much from transparency, communication, and trust. And if you're not trusting, if there's something that's coming up and you're like, hmm, I don't think this is right then there's really two ways to look at it. Is it my shit <laughs> or is it, or is it really them? So don't ignore your intuition. Don't ignore, like if you feel like, Hmm, I don't know, something doesn't feel right. Cause chances are you are really connected to that person and your intuition is serving a purpose. However, past relationships, past wounds, past heartbreak, it can all play into the mix and it might have nothing to do with your new partner and it might have everything to do with a previous relationship and maybe someone that that betrayed you or again maybe this isn't for you but just in general that there's whatever your your issues are in relationships has a tendency to come up so don't ignore it just understand hmm is it mine or is it really something that they are telling me that I need to I need to not just gloss over all right. Each week, I am so happy to have you here. I, I love it when you tune in. I love it when you ask questions. I want to know what is your state of the heart. I want to hear all of your heartbreak, your heartache, and anything that's weighing heavy on you that we can help transform because we're here for bliss, not for suffering. And so each week at 11, 11 Pacific time, please submit your questions, show up live. And if you want more resources, you can...
always schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with me. Um, I also do executive spiritual advising and there's lots of resources on bethbell.me, the awakening and healing handbook, lots of tips, tools, techniques that will help you. And there's also the herpes handbook. So whether you have herpes or not, there's juicy nuggets in there about viruses of the mind and also how to overcome shame, guilt, and heartache and heartbreak that the herpes virus can bring to lots of families and loved ones. All right. With that said, I can't wait to see you next week, 11, 11 Pacific time. And until then, wishing you much bliss and joy on the journey. Namaste.